it's also been stated, quote unquote, Memphis didn't want them, Louisville didn't want them, and Michigan State didn't want them. That's crazy. The truth is about Imani, the reason he went to Eastern Michigan is because it was his only option. What we're about to talk about is extremely shocking. Okay, so we all know how Imani Bates, the former number one player, blah, 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 he just transferred to Eastern Michigan. It's a big deal, right? Well, apparently there's sources coming out and saying the reason he decided to go to Eastern Michigan is because none of the big time programs wanted him. Yes, that is right. You heard me correctly. And this isn't from some Joe Schmo website or nothing. This is coming from CBS Sports. They've also came out and stated and given us more details about the situation. And I'm going to let you know right now, you're going to be shocked. There's no way you're not going to be shocked about what we're about to talk about in this video because I dropped my mouth when I saw it. I could not for the life of me believe the things they were saying about Imani and apparently, like I said, they're true. Just like they say, time will tell and the truth will always, and I mean always, come out. We're going to take a look at all of this and talk all about it because it is really fascinating. It's not every day you see the number one high school player in the entire country go to Eastern Michigan. Before we get into this video, I want to come by and say, guess what? We hit 200,000 subscribers we gained so many new subscribers over the past week and i cannot thank you guys enough it means so much to me we're no longer on the road to 200k we officially hit it and just thank you guys so much that's all i know to say i don't have a speech or anything i just want to come by and say i am extremely grateful and i'm just really happy and humbled that you guys enjoy watching the videos it means so much to me whenever you guys watch if you are new consider joining our family and now without further ado let's get into it Let's start off hot and take a look at this tweet right here. Two years ago today, Imani Bates committed to Michigan State in what was one of the biggest recruiting wins in the Tom Izzo era at the time. Two years later, he is on his way to Eastern Michigan, dot, 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 wow. And I've been reading a lot of the comments on Twitter and Instagram, and under that reply, a lot of people feel like and believe his father ruined his career. The reason they feel that way is relatively simple, so for those of you that don't know what's been going on, I'll try to inform you the best I can. Instead of letting Imani finish out his high school career like a rig regular kid in high school, his dad really pressured him, I felt like, and pushed him to do everything too fast. He took him out of high school early, created his own prep school, and then, as we all know recently, he made him go to Memphis early. Did Imani Bates play good last year for Memphis? No, he was average at best, and he was really bad at times. But here's what you gotta understand. Imani Bates was one of the youngest players in all of college basketball, and he should have been a senior in high school. There's not too many seniors in high school that could do good against the competition that Imani Bates was facing. One of the only seniors I felt like could have dominated college basketball would be LeBron James, because that guy, he's just, you, you know LeBron James. He's a generational talent. He's arguably the greatest of all time. I brought up LeBron for this reason. I think a lot of these dads and kids out there, they see how easy it was for LeBron in high school and when he first got into the NBA. LeBron was an 18 year old kid averaging dang near 25 points per game in the NBA and dominating teams on one of the worst teams in the entire league. So a lot of these dads out there and a lot of these high school kids when they're five star recruits, they're like, hey, LeBron did it, so why can't I? I mean, I'm a five-star recruit. What we just saw with Imani Bates last year should give you more reasons to appreciate LeBron's greatness. Whoa, 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 hold on, hold on. I know what some of you are saying if you're new to the channel. Yo, Matt, you must be this big LeBron fan. Why are you talking about him so much? Well, for the OGs of the channel, you're gonna know this. I'm not a LeBron fan, and if anything, I'd be more of a hater of LeBron. I grew up as a Kobe fan. That was my goat, so I didn't really care for LeBron, and there's always this battle between Kobe fans and LeBron fans. I've never heard of a single person who's a really big fan of Kobe Bryant and a really big fan of LeBron. I wasn't a hater of LeBron, I just wasn't a fan. But at the same time, I'm not gonna be ignorant. I don't think LeBron is the GOAT, but he's definitely top three, top four. So that's why I brought it up. I hope that gives you a perspective because I'm not even a LeBron fan and I'm giving him his credit when it's due. These high school kids nowadays, they're a different breed. They're freak athletes, some of the top shooters in the country. You can go on and on. When it comes to young players being talented, whether whether it's football or basketball, it's at an all-time high. That's why sports are so competitive because it seems like every kid's really good now. And what hurt Imani, and you can't emphasize this enough, is he was labeled as the chosen one ever since he was 10 years old. He was on the cover of freaking Sports Illustrated when he was only 15. I'm not saying being labeled as the number one player in high school and being on Sports Illustrated, it's a detriment to a player's career, 
But here's what does happen. You start to have all these people in your hometown, including his dad, talk about how great he is, and they just continue to hype him up and try to make him out to seem like he's the next LeBron James. You can take this how you want, but his dad literally thought Imani's path to the NBA was going to be a cakewalk. There's one thing you can never, and I mean never do in this life, and it's underestimate your competition. His dad basically slapped college basketball in its face and said, yeah, we're just going to let him skip his senior year and he'll get a little warm-up year in college and then he'll go to the NBA. No problem whatsoever. They literally try to make it seem like Imani was just going to average 25 points in college shooting 60% and be a one and done. And I know technically he wouldn't have been able to be a one and done, but you get what I'm trying to say. Not only did that not happen, but he had a terrible year for Memphis. I've never seen anything quite like it. He went from being the number one prospect, no questions asked, to I saw him falling in some of the second rounds whenever he can select to go to the NBA draft. It was so concerning the tape he put out when he was at Memphis, people started to question if this dude was actually actually even going to be that great. And guess what? Who does that go back to? Who does all that fall on? His dad. Anyways, moving on, let's get to the juicy stuff. Take a look at this right here. By committing to Eastern Michigan, Imani Bates could be repeating mistakes that stunted a once promising career. This article and this stuff I'm about to read you is coming from a very liable source, CBS Sports. I just want you to know that because this isn't some random dude on Twitter making an article. No, this is a legit source. Here's what they stated quote unquote and pay attention because this is the shocking part. In June 2022, at the age of 18, Imani Bates announced a commitment to Eastern Michigan, where he'll try to bounce back from arguably the most disappointing season any college player just had. So that should tell you all you need to know about him and how the past three years have unfolded for the one-time prodigy who has turned into a player basically no relevant program wanted to bring on a campus this summer. It's a sad deal. The end of that caught my attention. I was like, whoa, 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 hold on. What do you mean no relevant program wanted him? A lot of people were trying to make it out and seem like he was going to go to a major program like Louisville or anything like that. But it's been released and stated that him going to Eastern Michigan, that was one of his only options. Take a look at this quote unquote. And though Wednesday's commitment to his hometown school has been portrayed by some as a feel good story, truth is it's only a story because Bates options dwindled in the recent weeks. Falling then up, it's also been stated, quote unquote, Memphis didn't want him, Louisville didn't want him, and Michigan State didn't want him. That's crazy. The truth is about Imani, the reason he went to Eastern Michigan is because it was his only option. None of these schools wanted him. They saw what happened in Memphis, and they're like, no, 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 we're good on that. It gets even more interesting, though, because Imani Bates in the offseason said his quote-unquote main goal was to go to a place where he could win. Well, guess what, ladies and gentlemen? Eastern Michigan is one of the worst programs in the United States. They haven't had a winning record since 2018, and last year they went 10-21 and and finished 316th, according to KenPalm.com, whatever that is. To go on top of that, they haven't made the NCAA tournament since 1998 when dinosaurs were roaming the earth. And according to some of the preseason rankings, they're ranked 262nd. Imani, I thought you wanted to go to a school where you can win. You're not going to win here. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on. Maybe he does, but guess what? His dad, according to the sources, he's making most of these decisions. Do we know for sure 100% his dad is controlling him? No, but it looks like and appears like he has a big say-so. His dad literally created his own prep academy and made Imani Bates the focal point of it. And if you don't want to believe me, that's fine. Here's what someone else had to say about it. Pulling Imani out of high school and building a prep school around him was a mistake. Building a grassroots program around him was also a mistake. I assume it was profitable on some level, but it was still a mistake on most levels because it led to Bates spending multiple years in high school with subpar coaching. And here's my favorite part about this, and I know I stopped there even though there wasn't a period, but I want to harp on this one a lot. Imani was surrounded by grossly inferior talent, and there was also nobody to push him on and off the court. So his development just dot, 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 stopped. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that is exactly what I've talked about in the past couple of videos we've talked about on Imani. I said this in one of the recent videos, I'm going to say it again, iron sharpens iron. When you surround yourself with great people, great talent, whatever in this life, you're going to rise to their level. However, at the same time, if you surround yourself with bad people, toxic people, terrible athletes, you're going to sink to their level. And guess what? Going to Eastern Michigan, who went 10-21? That's not exactly going to be pushing Imani to get ready for the NBA. Because that's the ultimate goal, right? He wants to get to the league. I'm going to end the video off here and it's the last thing I got to say about it. It's my biggest question about Imani Bates. How is going to Eastern Michigan going to help him not 
really get to the NBA, but help him advance in his basketball career. How is going to Eastern freaking Michigan going to develop him better as a player? The bottom line is, and the cold hard truth is, it's not going to. But here's what it is going to do. It's going to make him comfortable because that's his hometown. That's where he grew up. That's where everybody praises him and tells him how good he is. He doesn't want to be in an environment like Memphis or a school that has high expectations because then there's a lot of pressure. I hate to say this, I really do, and I could be wrong, but it looks like he wants to be patted on his back and his dad's doing the patting. Let's not joke around here. It's his dad saying, hey, come back to Eastern Michigan. It'll be all right. Those haters, they won't say bad stuff about you here. They all love you. Just like this article stated, it's a sad story. Although it is sad, it's still an interesting one. I am very curious. Let me know your thoughts on this down below. But, uh, well, peace, man.